What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Monday, January 27th, 2025. I'm currently at a max loss on this iron condor that I swung over the weekend. I opened it around middle of the day on Friday, swung it over the weekend, we're at a max loss, so horrible position to be in. I decided to showcase to you guys the risk with these types of spreads as I've covered iron condors, iron butterflies on this channel before. It's rare to encounter a max loss. Fortunately, I was only in one lot of the iron condor. This is a candlestick chart of the SPX. I opened the trade sometime around here on Friday. This is the short strikes on the put side and the call side. This was the long strikes here and here, and then this was my break even. So I was just looking for a little bit of consolidation over the weekend. In my mind, the plan was to open up today being up around 50% of this credit. So I was looking to essentially make anywhere around 300 to maybe $350 is what I was expecting. Obviously, this is a massive loss to be in considering how much I was looking to make but that is the risk associated with these types of spreads you generally have a high probability of profit but that is the trade-off when you take a loss it is generally going to be a really bad loss in this case here this is by no means normal for the markets we actually opened up from an spx standpoint market opened up down over two percent by all means one can argue that this is a black swan type of gap down over the weekend the last time we had something like this was during august of last year so it's not something that's common I like to run these over the weekend type of trades when I'm just looking for a little bit of theta decay. So it's not common. However, this is every trader's worst case scenario to be down this much when you are running some sort of non-directional trade over the weekend. What made it even worse is the trade was actually green on Friday as the market stayed within the range. Even though we came down, tested the short strike here, this bounce at the end of the day was enough to put the credit spread up somewhere around 60 cents if I remember correctly. So I was up about $60 at one point. This year, or at least for Q1, I'm trying to force myself to trade below PDT on my main TOS margin account. If it does not go well, I intend to put the account back over PDT. It is just a challenge for myself as well as when I reviewed a lot of my notes for last year, I realized a lot of the trades actually would have been much better off if I held until expiration. The caveat now is obviously we just had a presidential change. So now we are trading under a Trump presidency. And if it's anything like his last term, the market was much more volatile. So I might have to change that plan but for the most part, as someone that's flagged as a pattern day trader, it means I don't get those three day trades that you guys might hear about. It means if I take one single day trade, I will have to deposit the balance to put the account back over PDT. In other words, if this account is at $10,000 and I accidentally take one day trade, the account will be locked unless I deposit at least $15,000 into, into the account to put it over $25,000. And with this pressure, it means I'm planning to be much more laser focused as it means if I open open a trade, I'm stuck in it until at least the next day. It's unfortunate that so early into the trading year, I will suffer such a major loss. However, this is coming off of a very hot streak. I was winning at least 90% of the day trades that I was letting be cash settled as most of the trades were on the SPX. I would just let them expire and let the broker take care of it as the market closed. I was fortunate to get a lot of zero DTE butterflies that were pinning as well as zero DTE iron condors that were getting a max profit. But a lot of those gains will be wiped out with this type of trade. Now, obviously, a trade like this is going to be a setback. The market put in a new all-time high on Friday, and usually whenever we are at all-time highs, there's generally going to be a couple days of consolidation as the market will digest the move to see if it's going to go higher or if we're going to get some sort of a pullback. It's not that common that right after we put in a new all-time high, we get a gap down of over 2%. The NASDAQ was actually down over 3%. What made matters worse is that I was actually in an ES put, and that is something I would usually do as a hedge when the VIX is so low. It means the price for insurance is very cheap. I would generally go about a 30 DTE put in the SPY as well as the SPX and maybe even the ES. In this case here, this put in which I was in was also for today's expiration. So it was a very cheap put that I purchased on Thursday, but then I told myself I don't really need it as I saw it as going to be a waste and it was going to eat into the profit from something like an iron butterfly, an iron condor, 
or any type of non-directional strategy. The cost of this put was only $2.12. So the insurance would have been $200, we can say, over the weekend. As you guys can see here on Friday, the put was going for even cheaper price at around $1.50 or so. ES options go for half the price that you guys see here. So in other words, if the contract costs $10, your broker is only going to charge you $500 to actually buy that option. So in this case here, it would have costed me $2.00. $212, which is actually the price I paid for it when I purchased it around $420. I closed it after hours within the same day for three bucks. So it was a small loss. And then you guys can see here pre-market today how much that put was going for. It was going for over $100, which is well over $5,000 in value. Or in this case, it would have been $4,975 in profit. Even if the exact exit obviously was not nailed, I just wanted to show you guys how high it would have went. You can trade futures options after the market closes or during during pre-markets, but let's just say I decided to hold this put at least until the market opened today. It was still going for over $50, which would have been over $2,700 or $2,487.50 in profits. That alone right here, this one cheap hedge or protection would have eclipsed the max loss that I'm currently under. As you guys can see, again, max loss is about $1,800, $1,900 right here. This put alone was up over $2,400 in profit, which would have been a net difference of we'll say five to $600 of a difference here putting me up. The reason I wanted to make this video is A, showcase you guys the risk associated with these type of short DTE spreads. I'm still in the iron condor because as the market opened, there was nothing really I can do. It's well below the uh, break even point. There's no point in trying to protect this or hedge this or manage it because it's a zero DTE at this point. There's no time left. Even if I went with something like the Friday expiration, there might have been something I would have been able to do. But because it was a three DTE, there really was no time. So as soon as the market opened, I had already accepted the fact that I was just going to take a max loss today as the risk to hold it was so low. At this point here, I was practically risking maybe 50 cents or so to potentially make back, you know, $1,800 in profit. That's a no brainer type of trade. <laughs> you know, risking $50 to potentially make 18, you know, $140 or whatever it is here is a trade I was forced to just stay in. I wanted to highlight the importance of considering hedging these types of positions, especially going into the next four years, again, with a new president. The market might be more volatile as most people will be expecting and sometimes really cheap hedges like this can protect yourself because it means let's just say the market opened up flat i probably would have made maybe 400 dollars on that iron condor and i probably would have lost 50 percent of the value of this contract here or maybe even let's say 60 percent of the value of this contract so i would have lost maybe 120 dollars I still would have ended up walking away with around 280 bucks or so. Let's just say $300 in profit is more than likely what I would have ended up with, even with this hedge. It wouldn't have been the $400 that I might have been looking for, as I might not have closed it as soon as the market opens. Who knows what I would have done, but the point is having that hedge would have protected me in this case here, even though I would have taken or eaten a small loss. If you're curious why I chose that strike price for the put, it was right here on the ES. It was just after identifying last week. This is something I shared in the Quant Trading App Discord about the supply up here. We already knew this was the previous all-time high. As you can see, we came up here, nicked that price, and then there was just massive rejection. I chose this here because this was right in between these two key zones right here from the volume profile. There's no way I could have known that that put would have gone in the money, which is insane to say the least. Now, granted, this type of gap down and this type of sell off is going to be news driven. So this is by no means normal. In this case here, I believe the headlines were pertaining to China releasing a new AI that has affected some of the mega cap stocks, more specifically NVIDIA. NVIDIA was down, I believe, over 12% at one point here today, and the entire market was dragged down. Tech stocks were hit really bad. We can check out some of the candle stacks here on the SPY on the Quant Trading App platform. The last 365 days, so the last year, there's been about 249 trading days. If we were to come down here and just sort this by gap, sort it by the negative gap, we can see that August 5th was the last time the market had a gap down this large, and then there is is today here which is january 1st i mean january 27th i just sorted this if we were to sort this actually by mondays now we're getting just the mondays and you guys can see after today and august the 
other largest gap down was 1%. And then out of the other 48 days, which would be 45 other days, <laughs> the gap down has been less than 1%, just to show you guys how rare that is. In this case here, the average gap down is going to be about negative 0.38%. So this happens to be a very unfortunate situation as, as this is less than 5% of the time over the past 365 days this has ever happened. Obviously, we can increase the sample set and maybe go a couple years prior. But I'm going to refrain from doing all of that on this video. But those of you who think you'd say no, you guys can play around with the candle stats and see what type of data you find. I just extended it now to back to 2022. So essentially almost tripling the sample set. Let's sort it by the gap down and then let's see where today lands. Let's include just Monday. And here we have it right here. This is the third largest gap down in this case here. Outside of that, you guys can see we have a few days that were around 1%. And then out of 140 entries, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 out of 140. That's less than probably, I don't know, 8% of the time or so this has ever happened where the market is down over 1% in the past 768 days or the last 140 Mondays for that matter, low percentile here, unfortunate situation. There isn't any way for me to have known this would have happened. As you guys can see here, this is less than a 10% amount of the times on a Monday this has happened in the past three years. But what I could have done better is at least hold on to this cheap hedge, at least closing it out, maybe pre-market today. In other words, let's just say the market did not gap down. I could have closed this out pre-market for a small loss here today, then realized the gains on the iron condor after the morning volatility would have subsided. Lastly, I'll just show you guys this. This is on Friday here around mid middle of the day. Just to show you guys what I was looking at, this is the gamma exposure profile for the SPX. This was choosing tomorrow's expiration. So again, on Friday, I was looking at tomorrow's expiration. I don't have the uh, page still up in which I was looking at today's expiration, but I just wanted you guys to see what I was thinking. I was slightly bullish biased as the market was holding over 6,100. I, I was thinking we might consolidate around here to start today off. I was actually more worried about the market going up to 6150. So at the time, this is what's actually I was paying attention to here. If we went up to here, it was a blessing or I was happy when I actually saw a sell off on Friday and then bounce right here. I was like, OK, great. The worst is yet to come. Maybe now we'll open up today and hover around 6100 is what I was expecting. Just showcasing you guys things can go wrong. Hopefully this video helps. And hopefully I don't have to do another video like this in which I'm encountering a max loss on this type of position again. I'm going to take a max loss. I have no problem if it's a max loss of maybe like three, four hundred dollars and I'm looking to make maybe a thousand dollars or maybe looking to make two thousand dollars. But to take a max loss like this of eighteen hundred dollars where I'm only looking to make about three hundred bucks is definitely something that sucks. But that's the trade off when you trade iron copper. Leave a comment down below if you learned something, like the video if you enjoyed it, share it if you learned something, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.